Envelopes of Cash will be published in 2023 by Envelopes of Cash LLC. It was designed by Andy Schwartz and illustrated by Mia Rose Sardona and Reese Ureta. Envelopes of Cash LLC provided this prototype in exchange for an honest review. One of her college football head coaches draft and play cards, move around the country to sign recruits, launch marketing campaigns, and more in order to score the most recruiting points. This is a big game and has three rule sets. I'm going to focus on the full game and touch on differences throughout the video. Players start with one matching envelope of cash on each month of their calendar, seven booster bucks, a player mat and tokens, recruiting board, a bus, and a head coach of their choice. They also receive six cards, choose four to build your secret stash. Each round starts with a card draft. During the draft, pick a card and pass the rest. In future months, you'll be able to choose from past cards and previously discarded ones. Empty the discard pile every three months. Before taking a deeper look at cards, let's look at coaches and the recruiting boards. Coaches provide a unique ability. Recruiting boards lift five players. Earn five recruiting points for signing the top three and 15 if you get all five. The names and locations are just for flavor. Top left symbols show one of three card types, blue culture, orange facility, and dollar sign fundraising in a region matching color. The cost in envelopes is below this and the card name. When you draft a card, it goes in your calendar board. Pay the cost in your turn to put it into play and immediately score the points shown in the top right. Used symbols are on the bottom left of the art. End is resolved at the end of the game, plus can be done as often as you want as long as you meet its requirement. The circular 1x means it can be resolved once per round. Played cards go in your player mat. Put recruited player tokens in the bottom left and the seat tokens in the other bottom spaces. Your bus travels one space at a time. Depending on the month, you get three, two, one, or zero free movement. Discard envelopes to move extra spaces. How do you get envelopes? At the start of each round, the first player rolls the dice. Each player chooses two of the dice and gains envelopes in the matching pips and color. Purple five means five purple envelopes. You don't immediately gain them though. In the full rules, envelopes go that number of months away. Purple 5 goes 5 months in the future. Want it sooner? Cut the value in half, round it down. To recruit a player at your location, pay their costs. To reserve someone in the future, send a runner. Pay one booster buck, then place one of your tokens and any number of envelopes near the player. Once you make your way there, pay the remainder to recruit that player. Just because you sent a runner doesn't mean that player will join you. If an opponent gets there first and plays their cost, too bad for you. In addition to moving, recruiting, sending runners, playing and or resolving cards, and trading three envelopes for one, you may run a marketing campaign, trade in booster bucks to score the corresponding points. You may also go to Vegas, spend an envelope to put a token on any space of the grid. When rolling the dice to start the next round, earn a booster buck and two matching envelopes if you win. When September arrives, unplayed March cards are removed from the game. Continue this throughout October, November, and so on. At the end of the game, score points depending on how many positions you filled and for the regions you created from most. I mentioned secret stash cards at the start. During the draft, use a stash card if none of the available cards appeal to you. To break it down, move around the country to recruit athletes, build a staff to use their abilities, and do whatever it takes to win. That's Envelopes of Cash. Our game's Envelopes of Cash, including set of Takedown, have been well over two hours. Keep in mind that two of those were learning games. Our first play with the family rules and then what's different in the full game. Setup is lengthy no matter which way you play. Even though an experienced group can get this down to around two hours, I'd stick to weekends of playing with three or four people. This is a big game requiring at least three feet by four feet. Player areas are about the size of two placemats and the central board is huge. The number of rules and decisions, managing envelopes, weighing priorities, and planning routes make this a heavy game to learn. A high amount of downtime means most kids won't have the patience. Finally, the theme doesn't require football knowledge or how college programs run things, but everything together means I'd wait until a player is 11 or 12, and very comfortable with Euro-style strategic board games. I couldn't play this with four because it'd be way too complex for grandma. I'd like to though because cards would cycle quicker. It'd be another few options to possibly draft and the fight for players would be even more cutthroat. I worry about that downtime though. There are many times that I forget Office of Cash is a prototype. I don't do crowdfunding previews anymore because so many are far from finished and these reviews take a lot of work. I've agreed to a few that are close to completion. Only a few things such as blue and blue and white and white icons on cards, reusing yellow and orange, which means specific regions on the map, for the recruiting boards and the rulebook layout reminded me that this still could use a bit of polish. 
I can't see the finished box being something you could just toss into your backpack. The size of the player areas plus length of your learning game means you won't be able to casually teach anyone. The lengthy setup creates a randomized layout, making replaying even the same region worthwhile. The different coaches have all been fun to try, and the recruiting boards plus regional and oppositional bonuses give you a new challenge each game. Once you know what you're doing, which honestly will only take a few turns if you're an experienced gamer, the player boards and cards have almost everything else you'd ever need to know. I think these are great. Because a player may have a pile of things to do on their turn, there can be rounds where you're sitting for a while to get things back to you. This isn't uncommon to have Euro-style strategy games, but could catch sports fans who are only casual gamers off guard. I love the Dyson envelope system in the full game. I may really need purple, but a 4 was rolled. Do I have it or take the whole amount 4 months from now and shift strategies? What if 4 months from now those 4 purple envelopes no longer help? Time to shift again. <laughs> When you make things work though, you feel pretty smart. The game is going to burn your brain because it's all about optimization and planning short, medium, and long term, all at the same time. Player interaction mostly comes down to the pick and pass drafting, keep an eye on what your opponents need, and the big ones, swooping in and taking a player to someone's right, securing the runner. In one of our games, Mom went to a border state location where Dad tried securing both players. She took one, but not both. It turned out the one she took didn't affect him at all. On my turn, I grabbed a player in the next state over that she had a few envelopes on. This time, it hurt her. She was unable to finish her recruiting board and fell out her entire team. I'm glad there are family rules to ease players in, but family board game rules typically lead to shorter and simpler games. In this case, only one of those is true. The rulebook has a link for newbie rules, but the website page is damn. I wonder about renaming them and a possibly simpler solution. Senior is the full game, sophomore is the standard family rules, freshman is like sophomore, but only plays half the year. There are many ways to mitigate from drafted cards, sending a runner so you don't lose a player and or money, doing a fundraiser, trading three envelopes and a booster buck in for one of any color, and even going to Vegas. Unless you really messed up, you'll never be like, I can't do anything this turn. There are even ways to travel further, play regional cards, discard an envelope to move, and so on. Because there are so many ways to score, things can be a bit swingy. Most of our games have been tight, but you could see that comfortable lead disappear in a hurry depending on how an opponent fulfills certain bonuses or built their office tableau. Envelopes of cash bundles a handful of mechanisms together, set collection, drafting, and accommodate to name a few in a game that has a unique theme that is more than it seems. First, many sports games try to recreate the action. This has you build your staff and using their abilities to recruit and develop athletes. It's also about what colleges are willing to do, though it isn't super in your face about this, to make sure they get the best of the best. The care put in this isn't surprising. When we were first contacted, my parents taught me a bit about how amateur and college sports work, recruiting, combines, drafting, and so on. I learned that college players help make tons of money for their schools, yet got little in return in comparison. In 2021, the US Supreme Court made it so college athletes can now be compensated for their names, images, and likenesses. One of the people involved in getting California to make this a law and then push it for it to be nationwide was an economist named Andy Schwartz. It's one thing for a game to have a message on be well researched. It's another thing to be fun. Is there a lot of downtime? <laughs> yes. Are there some graphic design issues that are hopefully fixed in the finished version? Yes. Will the length and complexity, even in the family worlds, be an obstacle for many? Well, yes. Despite those issues, I think this is excellent and would love to play whenever we have the time. 